Hi everyone. I've got here my SDK 500 from Atmel that's a development kit used to program AVR microcontrollers and I thought I'd just try and explain a few things about how it works. So the first question is well why do we need a development kit? A development kit gives you an environment that lets you test the particular chip you want with not a whole lot more extra work to do. So it has a socket for an oscillator, it's got some LEDs for testing, it's got some switches for testing, it breaks out all of the ports nicely, and it's got a whole bunch of stuff that lets you load code onto the chip. The first thing you need to do after you choose your AVR is work out which one of these sockets it goes in. Now Atmel provides you with a manual that tells you roughly which chip goes where, but you need to be careful because this chip here is the Atmega 88V-10PI. Now the V-10PI is not actually relevant for choosing the socket. So if you have an Atmega chip, well probably something like Atmega 88 then some letters, just ignore the letters, they're not really relevant for picking the socket. Once you've picked the right socket, look at the color around it, this one's green, and then look for the programming header, so this one's also green. So it's pretty simple, just get your AVRSP, put it in the green one, and you're done. Now originally with the STK500 it has its own built-in programming circuitry here so that was really useful you could just plug it into the serial port on your computer. Thing is no one really has serial ports nowadays so we use this thing called an AVR ISP this blue box and it does the same thing but over USB. So it's important to keep in mind that this board has a bunch of configurable options. Uh, these jumpers up here let you change, for example, whether you're using the crystal oscillator, whether you're using the onboard oscillator, or whether you're not using an oscillator at all. They let you control if you connect up this adjustable power circuitry or not, they let you control if this reset button is connected and they let you control if the analog reference voltage is programmable. You may not need all that stuff, but if you do, the easiest thing to do is just flip the board over and it tells you exactly what you need to know. This is how you set all the jumpers. Generally speaking, uh, if you get your board and there's something wrong, it's probably the jumpers. So make sure when you get it they look like this on 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 and then this one is to the right okay so next thing to do is the power switch up here we just flick it on and this light down here if it goes green it means everything's all good that's what you want to see if it starts uh, going red or blinking orange that means somewhere on here you have a short circuit meaning that your 5 volts is connected to ground. Let's see if we can just see that. So I just made it angry at me and the little light went red. So one other thing to note is that when you turn this on if you have your programmer plugged in this light means it's angry. Uh, the reason this thing doesn't work is either short circuit or it can't control the reset line. Now if you read the reset jumper on the bottom it says that it wires it to this button and it doesn't do that with a very weak pull up, it's actually quite strong. So if you want this thing to stop being angry take out the reset jumper and turn the power on and off again. Connecting the peripherals is really simple. All you have to do is take a ribbon cable, it's got 10 pins, and you just go from, whoop, that one's not going to work, another ribbon cable, pick the port you want, let's say port B, 
push it on and then go to LED. Now it's important to note that there are no twists in this cable. If, if you plug it in twisted you will short out 5 volts in ground depending on what this chip is doing and then that little light will be angry at you. Okay, so when you've got the three green lights you're ready to load some code onto your chip. Now from this end it's actually pretty simple, that's the whole point. You just plug everything in and then on your computer hit program. And there you go. Um, I'll do a bit more information later on how you get that to go on your computer. Uh, one thing I'd just like to point out is that these two lights up here aren't working. That's because we have it connected to port B and if you look in the data sheet port B6 and B7 which would be connected to LED6 and LED7 are reserved for the crystal oscillator which is in here. Uh, since it's using its internal oscillator it's fine with our next external one but the pins are still reserved because I didn't do anything to unreserve them. So I'd just like to point out one last thing. I've set these LEDs now to be 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, but it's the opposite. This one is actually 1, this is actually 0, this is actually 1 and so forth. The reason that is is because all of these LEDs are active low, meaning that when you send 0 volts to them they turn on and not the other way around. Uh, the reason that is is somewhat historical. It's because it used to be uh, easier to make end channel FETs and they could be bigger on the chip. So everyone used active low for things that were to draw a lot of current. Um, but otherwise that's just a little trap to keep in mind. 